Welcome to Superior Profit Monday morning meet live 360 degrees analysis and Q&A. I am Saganandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company or how it may help in your trading, you can visit the website superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. This Monday morning meeting is different from the weekly market roundup video that we publish in the YouTube channel, Superior Profit channel. The weekly market roundup takes the top-down approach of analyzing stocks, starting with market, then going into sector, then industry, fundamental and technical analysis. Whereas this Monday morning meet, this Monday morning meet is used to demonstrate top-down or bottom-up or insight-based identification of trade opportunities. And we try to cover different ways of using queue systems and techniques in different days. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system now. Today, we will have a quick look at the global markets, Australia, China, Hong Kong, India, and UK. Then I will follow up on a few things that I mentioned in the weekly market roundup. In the weekly market roundup, I had a look at PM and MO. Both are in the tobacco industry and I compared them. I couldn't cover all the comparisons Therefore, I will have a relook at these two stocks. In the market roundup, I also mentioned about rates industries that are weak and see why we are not shorting them, but waiting for possible buying opportunities. I will have a look at them again. Then, Carrying forward from the comparison of PM and MO, I will like to analyze pairs of stocks or multiple stocks from different industries and see how using Q system we can choose one or the other if we had to buy only one from each of these industries. We look at JD versus BABA, ATVI versus EA, NUE versus X or well and PHM versus LEM. Then I have a list of stocks. We may go through at least some of them. Look at only their daily charts and see what you think about the stocks. Is there a possible buy setup? The buy setup can be one of the key trade setups. It can be a trend following setup, trend following long or trend reversing headwind setup or box sideways market setup or bounce exhausting market or a breakout setup. We'll see if you can identify any trade setup or any impending trade setup in any of these stocks. We'll then look at how to use weekly headwind scan and also look at use of the reversal scan on QLIT. Not sure if we'll have time to cover all of this, but let's begin. We start with a look at the global markets. 
let's start with Australia dot a x j o we are opening it with at a glance template that is the weekly backdrop chart on the left and the daily hop on chart on the right at the very top a x j o displayed the bearish headwind and from there it dropped three weeks ago it displayed the bullish headwind at the very bottom since then price is gradually going up in the daily chart price is still in a downtrend therefore we are not going to take any trend following long trade there is no trend reversing contrary and long trade setup right now in axjo it is in a downtrend at present what about hong kong market weekly is inside a triangle pattern daily is also inside a triangle pattern overall you can say it is in a downtrend and then it is stabilizing inside a triangle both in weekly and daily unless it breaks out of the triangle in either direction we are not sure about the trend and we may avoid taking any trend following trend it is not in an uptrend what about the china index dot csi 300 also in a clear downtrend weekly has multiple memory resistance levels daily is also in a downtrend therefore we are not going to look for any buying opportunity here india nifty nsei index this is looking much stronger than the hong kong china or australia market in the weekly it is going up for several weeks in the daily it is inside a triangle pattern before taking our next trend following trade we will wait to see if it is breaking out to the upside or downside what about uk market ftse also in a downtrend in the weekly and daily there is not even any triangle formation it is in a clear downtrend we will not look for buying opportunity here we we'll look at the us futures later let's move on to our next topic follow up from the market roundup and compare pm versus mo i will do that based on technical analysis let's have pm on the left mo on the right i had already looked at their weekly and daily charts i will have a relook at their daily charts using a slightly different template and i will highlight two points that i didn't cover in the weekly market roundup pm and mo both drop and then for several days it is now going up first the candle color turned yellow that is neutral and then as of last friday candle color has turned green or cyan green for pm cyan for mo both are bullish but cyan is more bullish this i already covered in the market roundup i wanted to highlight few more points two more one is mo is now inside the boundary lines it is above the lower boundary level whereas pm is still below the lower boundary 
So PM is weaker when we see that it is below the normal drop that it is expected to have in terms of the boundary lines. When we are buying stocks, we would like to buy the stronger stock. MO is stronger in that respect because it is at least above the upper boundary. It is at least above the lower boundary level, not below the lower boundary as is the case for PM. Another point that we may look at is the movement indicator specifically the lowest bars in the movement indicator that is the momentum you will see mo has multiple green bars here whereas pm has only one green bar in the recent period if we look at the speed the middle crosses then we see that again mo is stronger it has greens crosses for many more days than pm in terms of acceleration the top dots they are identical they have approximately same number of acceleration green dots so if we look at all the three indicators inside movement we see mo is stronger than pm in that respect also so in addition to the points that I covered in the weekly market roundup, we see two more reasons to buy MO than PM if we were to buy any one of these two stocks. Next topic, look at the rates industries that are weak and see why we are not shorting but waiting for buying opportunities. In QH, we have multiple tabs. In the dashboard tab, we have information about all the sectors, 11 sectors. We have a graph showing their one day performance and also five day performance. The one day performance is updated in real time. Then we have the inside tab where we find the best and worst performing stocks under different categories. You may further look at their fundamentals and technicals and industry rotation and then decide if there is a buying or shorting opportunity. Then we have the sector scorecard and heat map and industry scorecard and heat map. How we use the industry scorecard and heat map? We look for the strongest industries in the recent period, let's say under five days, that is one week period, cyan color shows strength. So we are going to look for buying opportunities in these strongest industries. We can double click the column header to reverse the sort order. And now we have the magenta color industries at the top. These are the weakest industries and we look for shorting opportunities here. However, in the market roundup, I mentioned that though residential rates and industrial rates are weak, they were much stronger earlier. You can see they had cyan colors in earlier review periods. However, they are deep magenta now. Still, I mentioned that it may not be the right time to look for buying, to look for shorting opportunities. Why? Let's drill down into residential rate stocks. Usually we look to short the overvalued stocks. These are the stocks that has magenta color under valuation column. Let me change my technical trading system to Q Elite on TradeStation. Now if I click the chart icon, then I will copy the ticker symbol of all these overvalued stocks in residential rates industry to clipboard. I can go to TradeStation Radar and let me paste them. 
now I'm going to look at these stocks one by one using our standard at a glance template. Let me synchronize the two symbols between weekly and daily charts. Here at the top now, I have the stocks that I found from QEdge. They are from residential rates industry, which is very weak. Then I drill down and I found the overvalued stocks. So normally we look for shorting opportunities, weak industry overvalued stocks. However, in the market roundup, I mentioned we will not look for shorting. Why? Because when we look at the charts, we see the first stock ACC. It is bouncing from the weekly memory support for two successive weeks. And in the daily chart, it is going up from the memory support. This automatically drawn very smart trend lines. And it also has this unique Q headwind possible bullish reversal signal. That's why we are not going to look for any shorting opportunity in SEC. What about the next stock? Sure, I will look at Netflix also. So I put a comment. I will look at Netflix as well, sure. AVB, the next stock. Here also we see prices near a weekly memory support line. It is below the memory support, but the week is the last week. The last two weeks has long lower tails that tend to be bullish. And again, in the daily chart, we have a bullish headwind signal, possible reversal signal. And it is also near the watermark support. So both SEC, FAB may give a buying opportunity now in terms of technical charts. Next chart, CPT. Again, it is near weekly as well as memory support. Not a time where we are going to short it. Next stock, EQR. Same thing at memory support in weekly and daily. And again, there is this possible bullish reversal signal, headwind signal. Next, ESS. It has a bullish headwind signal in the daily chart. There is no memory support in the weekly, but there is a bullish headwind signal in the daily. And it is near this long-term watermark pivot support level. Next, MAA. Again, there is a bullish headwind in daily, it is near the watermark support, this watermark support in daily. Last one, UDR. Here it is at daily watermark, not daily watermark, it is at daily memory support and again has a bullish headwind signal. This is what I mentioned in the market roundup that even though this industry residential rates is very weak now, we are not going to find any shorting opportunity even in the overvalued stocks. And I told I will have a look at industrial rates also. In QEdge, we can click this button to drill down into the underlying stocks. These are the stocks. We have three overvalued stocks. Let's get them to trade station. Look at them one by one, EGP. Again, at memory support in both weekly and daily has a bullish headwind signal. FR has a watermark support, long-term watermark support. Those tend to be quite effective in weekly. And daily there is no immediate watermark level. There is no bullish headwind, but there is watermark in the weekly. Last one, PLD. The two weekly candles are bullish in shape because they have long lower tails and it is near the watermark support level. That is why we are not going to short any of these stocks in these two real estate sector industries. What that is giving 
signal off is probably that these real estate industries may be going up. Not sure, but it may be going up. If they are going up, they are defensive sectors, defensive industries. Does it mean the non-defensive industries will go down? That we don't know. Sometimes the market is so strong that defensive, non-defensive, all industries go up. But that is not true all the time. More common is either defensive industries going up or non-defensive industries going up. That is giving some concern. In the weekly market roundup, I mentioned that there is more room for the market to go up. That was based on market breadth analysis, based on market ETF analysis. Everything is looking bullish and the resistance is a bit far away. So if we look at the market level, it is telling us that market is likely going to go up. But when I looked at the real estate industries, I saw that though it is relatively weak compared to the other industries, in the overvalued stocks, there is no shorting opportunity. Instead, technically, they are closer to giving buying opportunities. That made me pause for a while. Later on, we'll see that the same is true for many utility stocks also. I will have a look at them if we have time. Now, out of these stocks, these are from the industrial rates industry. DRE is one. That is negative earnings growth. This one, EGP has positive earnings growth in the latest quarter. Let's look at EGP on QLE. In the market roundup, I mentioned that I will look for a possible buying opportunity among these stocks and EGP is one. If the industry starts to go up, then we'll have a stock where the industry is strong. Fundamentally, here we can see that we have reason to take a long position in EGP because it has positive recent quarter earnings growth. Pays a small dividend, 3.1%. It is 16.5% above 52 week low. So fundamentally, at least in terms of latest quarterly earnings growth, we have reasons to consider buying it. And technically, it is having very nice support at weekly mark, weekly memory lines which are coming from far, far away. They tend to be quite effective. It is also near this weekly watermark pivot support level. Daily has the watermark support, memory support, and also the bullish headwind signal. So technically, in fact, it is giving us a bullish headwind reversal trade setup as of Friday. Fundamentals are okay. If the industry starts to go up today, then this will be a buying opportunity. This is the one that I wanted to share. I mentioned about in the market round. Let's move on to next topic. I compared PM and MO in the market roundup and I did some more comparison just now. Let's carry on the same exercise and see how we can use the Q systems to compare these other pairs or multiple stocks, triplets of stocks. And you will see there are many buying opportunities among them, which is a good thing. Let's start with JD versus Baba. Let's find their fundamental comparison first. JD. O. In Q vital, we can type the symbol for any global stock. It may be listed in any country. Then immediately it will carry on three different passes. In the first pass, it will retrieve detail about the stock. In the second pass, it will retrieve PR stocks based on what relationship we are choosing and some other filter criteria. And in the third pass, it will retrieve even more data and calculate vital statistics and other information. Let's look at 
the stocks vital panel we have JD here and will Baba be here Baba let's compare them in terms of fundamentals I didn't do this exercise before we should be able to carry out the exercise quickly because all are color coded in terms of valuation both of them are yellow we don't need to look at the exact score both of them are yellow so in terms of valuation both are equal if we look at the secondary valuation column then baba is stronger because it is in yellow color but jd is in magenta color so combining valuation and secondary valuation baba is slightly stronger what about earnings growth if we look at the last three quarterly earnings growth i should be able to select them like this control select clearly baba is again stronger it has none of the quarters with negative earnings growth whereas jd has negative earnings growth in on the last three quarters and if we look at the last three yearly periods again baba is stronger so both in terms of valuation as well as in terms of earnings growth baba is stronger none of them has any dividend earnings quality something that we may look at more for longer term holding in this case also in this regard also baba is stronger the earnings quality is yellow for baba but jd is in magenta for short squeeze jd has a better score is cyan, cyan color however if we combine all the things then clearly baba is fundamentally stronger than jd in terms of valuation in terms of earnings growth in fact in terms of revenue growth as well in terms of earnings quality as well only about short squeeze jd is stronger probably because it has dropped a lot they are both in the same industry so i'm not going to look at the industry there will not be any difference let's look at their technical charts let's look at jd on the left hand side and baba on the right hand side we'll use the weekly backdrop template first in terms of weekly chart jd dropped a lot baba also dropped a lot then jd stabilized and the candle colors are cyan for several weeks now let me ask looking at these two charts in your view which one you think is strong stronger in terms of fundamental i think there was no question baba was stronger technically looking at these two weekly charts which one you think is stronger if we look at the price move we can see that jd has stabilized it is not going down anymore but it has not been able to go up yet whereas baba already went up once and then came back and retested the same level created a double bottom and again the candle color has turned bullish the candle shape is also bullish at the right edge at the right edge both the stocks have bullish shape bullish color candle however baba already tried to go up once and then retesting the bottom again so to me in terms of weekly chart the backdrop template baba is stronger because it already went up once what about the daily chart let's use the hop on template for that i will use hot keys to change the template here the decision is very easy again 
JD is still inside a triangle pattern. It has not been able to break above the memory resistance levels. Whereas BABA, as I mentioned, based on the weekly charts also, that BABA could go up once, now retested the level actually twice in the daily chart. Then it displayed a bullish headwind signal, bull release signal, bullish color, flow color, cyan color candle on Friday and broke out of the memory resistance. So in terms of daily chart, hop on template, BABA is stronger. Fundamentally, BABA is stronger. Weekly charts, in my view, BABA is stronger. Daily, clearly, BABA is stronger. So if we had to buy one of these two stocks, one would probably prefer BABA than JD. Novice traders sometimes tend to buy the weaker stock and think that it will shoot up and it will cover a larger distance. Usually that doesn't come true. It is a better idea to buy the stronger stock. Both of these stocks are at a low price level, but in terms of fundamentals and technicals, BABA is stronger. And we could decide that easily using the color coding. We may not have time to go through all the comparisons. Do you have any preference between the three other lists? Which one you would like to go through? If no preference, then let us just follow this order. At least try to go through two more pairs or triplets. Let's look at ATVI versus EA. Again, we will start with their fundamental analysis. The moment we type the root stock, it will carry out the three passes. Retrieve the stock's basic information that we typed in root stock cell. Now retrieving the PR stocks. How much time it takes depends on the response time from Thomson Reuters. No data is stored in the computer. You can see at the top, Thomson Reuters icon is online. And it is taking more time than it is expected to take. Let it try to retrieve the data or maybe I will just click the pause button and play button again so that resends the request to Thomson Reuters. Thomson Reuters is not cooperating right now. Okay, it has done that. Okay. Now let's look at their vital statistics. In fact, Q Vital or Q Edge also, the stock panel in Q Edge has multiple panels. But for 90% of the cases, the vital panel is enough. So we are looking at only the vital panel, EA versus ATPI, top two stocks. Instantly, we know from the color coding that in terms of valuation, first we look at the valuation column. If one is clearly stronger, we don't need to look at the secondary valuation column. So EA is stronger in terms of valuation. What about earnings growth? If we look at the latest quarter, then EA is stronger again. If we look at the three yearly periods, again, EA is stronger. So between these two stocks, in terms of valuation as well as fundamental, EA is stronger. Dividend is either not there or very small. We don't need to consider that. Earnings quality is good for both of them. ATVI has better short squeeze potential. Similar case, as we saw between BABA and JD, EA is clearly stronger than ATVI. Let's look at their technical charts. Let's start with weekly. I will change the templates to weekly template first and then change the symbols. ATVI on the left 
and EA on the right. Fundamentally, we saw EA is stronger. Technically, let's see. Weekly chart. Instantly, we know from the color coding that EA is stronger because the backdrop candle color has already turned cyan. ATVI is not cyan yet, it is yellow. Will not probably buy in EA because there is a memory resistance level. But in terms of price move, immediate price move, which is reflected in the backdrop candle color, EA is stronger. Let's look at their daily charts using hop on template. Here we see that there is a memory resistance in EA in the daily chart. EA had a memory resistance in the weekly chart also. Friday went up strongly with high volume shown by the dot. It had a gap up open also, but still it has a memory resistance. So there is no buying opportunity. Whereas ATVI displayed multiple bullish headwind signals, created a nice base and now broke out of the memory resistance on Friday. So if we look at the daily chart using Hopon template, then ATVI is stronger. If we at all think of buying one of these stocks based on only technicals, then in fact ATVI is going to give us a low risk buying opportunity now. The setup will be breakout trade setup and we would have additional confidence because there are multiple bullish headwind possible reversal signals. In EA, though it is fundamentally stronger, weekly chart is also stronger in terms of price move because of the memory resistance in daily as well as weekly will not have any immediate buying opportunity. That was the comparison between ATVI EA. Let's look at the steel industry stocks. In fact, one of them may have a buying opportunity. Let's look at NUE versus VALE. Start with the fundamental comparison, NUE. Let's see how long Thomson Reuters takes now. It has retrieved the basic information very fast. Okay, now it is faster. N E E X and Vel. Vel is not in this list. If Vel is not in this list because it is probably a South American company, what we can do, we can simply type the symbol in the manual list. If we know a steel company that we want to compare that is not retrieved from Thomson Reuters peer comparison, industry peer comparison, then we can type the additional symbol or symbols. It is retrieving the vital statistics again. Dot K is for consolidated. I think so. Let me just check from Thomson Reuters that VALE.K is indeed the symbol. Yes, VALE.K. It has retrieved the data. Let's look at the stocks. We have NUE, we have VALE, and we have X. In terms of valuation, NUE and X is clearly better because it has sand color under valuation column, Vale is weaker. In terms of earnings growth, again, Vale is weaker because the last three quarterly earnings growth is negative for Vale, whereas positive for NEE, positive for X also. Pretty impressive earnings growth for X and for NEE also. For short-term trading, we are more interested in the latest quarter. Don't need to look back two, three quarters before because those will correspond to 60 days before result and 90 days before result. The last quarter is enough for short-term trading and both NUE and X are 
pretty strong in that regard. Dividend, small dividend. There are other many other stocks paying much bigger dividend. Earnings quality, again, more important for longer term holding. X and Vail both have solid earnings quality. In terms of fundamentals, then combining the valuation and earnings, these are the major criteria and maybe dividend for dividend player, dividend playing stocks. But that is not always the case. Usually people look for either value or growth in retirement account. I have some dividend paying stocks also. But usually let's focus on valuation and earnings growth. NUE and X is certainly clearly stronger than fail. What about technical charts? Let's compare X and NUE first. Again, start with the weekly backdrop template. In terms of fundamentals, both were more or less equal. Let's start with NUE on the left and X on the right. Both drop. At the right edge, NUE candle color, backdrop color is still yellow, but X is cyan. So we have to conclude based on the backdrop candle color that at the right edge, X is stronger. Though NUE anyway, is also quite strong because it has a very bullish shape candle in the last week. Why didn't it turn cyan? Because relative to the prior drop, the move up last week was not enough to turn it into cyan color. That could be one reason. But X has fared better. Everything is relative. A price move up is relative to the preceding price drop. So in UE is strong, but not as strong as X. Let's look at the daily hop on charts. I'll use the hotkeys. In UE and X both have very similar pattern in the daily chart. Both decline and at the right edge on Friday, both went up strongly. So if we combine weekly daily together, they are quite similar. Daily is certainly very similar. If we add weekly, then we have to say X is stronger, slightly stronger than NUE. Fundamentally, they were more or less same. Let's now compare X with Vail. Let's exclude NUE. I will start with weekly again. I will keep X and I will replace NUE with Vail. Now we see that Vail is actually pretty strong in terms of weekly technicals, the backdrop chart. It has very good support from the weekly memory trend line, the automatically drawn trend lines. Many times, one, two, three times in recent weeks, it tried to go below that. In fact, we might include this week also. It couldn't penetrate or close below the memory support. And in the last week, it went up strongly. The relative performance is very strong. X is still in a long-term downtrend. And well, we have to say that at worst, it is going sideways, very wide range in the weekly chart. If I compress the chart for well, let's see how it is actually strong. It was going up and then it is moving sideways. There is memory support, multi bottom, one, two, three, four, five times. And the relative performance is very strong. If I compress X, it is in fact at a double bottom. So X also has reason to go up. Earlier I mentioned that novice traders try to buy the stock that is at a very low level. Bottom catching opportunities, I take them often. 
they can also be very profitable but if we have two stocks in same industry any fundamentals were similar for both of them then well would be a better choice in terms of technicals but fundamentals are not the same so if somebody is trading based on only technicals i think veil is clearly stronger in terms of the weekly chart let's look at their daily charts also using hop on template x is very clearly in a downtrend there is no trade setup no q trade setup in x in well the price came to the memory support and went up let me try to draw it memory support watermark support price tried to come to the support multiple times went up made a dip on this magenta candle and friday went up sharply closed above the yellow and white both the direction lines so this is stronger you could take a long position following the approach of buying a stock that is pulling back to support and going up from there you can see very high activity activity on friday is much stronger than x so technically well is stronger if you look at fundamentals then x is stronger now it's up to the trader which one to give more preference or avoid trading both of them in q technique we like to take a trade only if the industry fundamental technical all are strong so none of these two stocks fail or x meet those criteria none of these are 360 degrees trade x doesn't have any technical trade setup finally we make money if the stock goes up so we give high importance to technicals x clearly doesn't have any trade setup right now technically fail has a pullback to support and going up with high activity that kind of setup but the fundamentals are not so good if you take a long position in fail you could book partial profit at the upper boundary level and next profit target could be this memory resistance level and after that the watermark resistance level i will not go through the comparison of the home builders phm and len you may use the q systems to do the same next topic what do you think of these stocks from their daily charts and there are many of them we will not have time to look at all of them let's look at top two and bottom two and i will try to do it fast i would like to look at only their daily chart at least in the beginning therefore i will hide the weekly chart let's look at their daily chart adobe adbe adbe using daily hop on template how does it look meaning is there any kind of buying opportunity it has created a double bottom and then it gave us a bull release signal at a double bottom accompanied by heavy activity therefore in the daily chart as of this day we had a box long trade setup however there is a memory resistance nearby therefore on this day though there was a box trade setup the reward risk would not be attractive we would not take any long trade now on friday it broke out of the memory resistance so on friday we could execute the long trade which stopped just below recent low we could book partial profit once the risk distance is covered which would be somewhere here or maybe at the yellow direction line next profit target would be the memory resistance levels so adobe has a breakout long setup as of friday at least on the 
intelligent. What about the other three stocks? Let's look at them. ANSS, ANSS. Very similar, isn't it? Double bottom, or you can say triple bottom, plus false downside breakout. Support is provided by this watermark pivot, broke out of the memory resistance on Friday. There was a bullish headwind at this level. As I have mentioned many times, a bullish headwind can push price up when price comes back to the same level, more buying may be left. So it is more likely that price will go up. And here we have a low risk breakout opportunity at multi bottom, similar to Adobe. Two more stocks LKQ. LKQ. Here, we don't have the breakout yet. On Friday, price tried to go above the memory resistance at the right edge, but closed below it. However, it has multiple bullish headwind signals. If today it goes up, we'll have the breakout and it will give us a breakout trade setup not exactly like Adobe and ANSS because those had clear support from multi top, double top or trip, sorry, not top. Adobe and ANSS had clear support from double or triple bottoms. LKQ doesn't have such support, at least not in the daily chart. What about, okay, let's look at the weekly chart for LKQ. I'll change the interval here. Now we see that there is actually a watermark support, long-term watermark support in the weekly chart. So when we combine weekly and daily, LKQ is about to give a breakout setup that is very similar to what came in Adobe and ANSS on Friday itself. I will change back to daily and look at the last stop that I wanted to look at, that is RHI. There are many other stocks that I wanted to look at. They were giving us a story, a theme. And I will conclude with the theme after I look at RHI, RHI. Very similar to LKQ, that's why I paired them together in my list. It has not given us the breakout yet, but it may give the breakout soon and it is at a long-term watermark support level. So we looked at four stocks, two of them, ADBE, here are the ADBE and NSSS on Friday broke out of memory resistance. They are at double or triple bottom. LKQ and RHI also at double bottom. When we look at longer term watermark support level, they haven't given us the breakout yet. We could keep an eye on these stocks based on what they had something in common. That is, they had a bullish headwind signal one week earlier. This is RHI. Let me look at LKQ. Also had a bullish headwind signal one week earlier. On the left hand side is the weekly backdrop chart. Then ADBE had a bullish headwind signal one week earlier. And ANSS had a bullish headwind signal one week earlier. Now, if you look at this long list, these are the stocks in S&P 500 that displayed bullish headwind signal one week earlier and that were giving a possible long opportunity, except LKQ and RHI. LKQ and RHI are about to give a breakout trade opportunity and all these others 
had a bully scheduling one week ago and actually gave a trade setup of some kind. How many S&P 500 stocks displayed bullish headwind two weeks ago? I have that list in Meta Stock. 69 out of about 500 stocks. That is more than 12%. More than 12% of S&P 500 stocks displayed a bullish headwind signal two weeks ago. That is a very large number. This is FTSE. I should go back to trade station. Here, ANSS, two weeks ago, we had a bullish headwind. So more than 12%. That is a very large number. That information was very useful. When you see a large number of stocks displaying bullish headwind in the weekly chart, large number as a percentage, then you are not going to take short trades. You will look for buying opportunities. And out of that 69, this many stocks from ADBE to SK, SWK, in fact, gave one or another kind of long trade setup between the time the bullish headwind came and last Friday. LKQ and RHI may give the trade setup this week. This is very useful to know if there is a bullish headwind. That is the point I was going to allude to. We have a scan for weekly headwind. Well, let's look at Metastar. Explore long headwind. And you can run it on the weekly interval. If you are using TradeStation Q Elite, then we have the headwind set up here. You could run it on, by default, it is daily interval. I'm typing SPY. The interval is daily. You can right click time frame and change it to weekly. Of course, radar, this is radar on TradeStation, will show the headwind only for the current candle. If you ran this two weeks ago, then you will get the same list as in Metastock. You will see more than 12% of S&P 500 stocks were giving bullish headwind in the weekly chart. What you would do? You would create a short list of them and look at the short list every day to see if they are giving any buy trade setup. You wouldn't even have to wait for the end of the day you could use the fine tune intraday chart and if there is a trade setup you might make an early entry in the morning session usually by the end of the session you will have profit because the weekly is already bullish and the daily was also bullish that is why you would have taken the trade using real time fine tune chart therefore you can use the weekly headwind scan to create a short list, of st short list of stocks where you are going to look for buying opportunity. You can use the reversal scan for the same purpose, but I'll not go through that today. Let's look at Netflix. Let's look at its fundamentals. I could do that from QEdge also. Let me look at Netflix fundamental and industry strength both. I can do that from QEdge. Let me search for the stock Netflix and FLX. It's already overvalued, but has excellent earnings growth and revenue growth as well. The last three quarters, very nice earnings growth. Last three years also, very nice earnings growth. Very good revenue growth also. In the last year as well as last three quarters, there is a short squeeze potential. Last five days, it has gone up by 16%. It is significantly above 52 week low. Fundamentally, we are okay to buy a stock. Either if the valuation is optimal, it should be in sand color or it has earnings growth. In this case, it has solid earnings growth or dividend player, but in this case, no dividend. Because of strong earnings growth, we are okay to take a long trade. Let's look at the industry 
we can click the peer analysis button it will look at other peer stocks interestingly i see there are few stocks in the same industry that are fundamentally good value so sometimes we may start with a stock but end up buying another stock you may look at cnk dis and viab though they may not be exactly same not exact in the exact same business as netflix but they are in the same movies and entertainment industry what about the industry industry is strong it is cyan color there was some magenta color over 10 days five days strong if i open up the recent days it is also remaining strong usually we look at five days sometimes looking at one day gives us uh, two noisy information for sector and industry level five days is more appropriate sometimes if we are trying to catch turn around then it is useful to look at the one day period in fact one day changes can be highlighted in real time if the market is open so in terms of fundamentals netflix is strong it's solid earnings growth revenue growth also industry is strong what about the chart let's look at netflix nflx interestingly this is also a stock that had the bullish headwind two weeks ago so if we ran the sonar at that time we would find that we call the scans as sonar and then we will keep an eye on the stock in the daily chart and in the daily chart we see there was a bullish headwind here also price went up came back as i mentioned just a while ago if bullish headwind can push price up when price comes back to the same level to retest there is a high chance it will go back up again in this case it created a false downside breakout stopping out weak hands it gave us a bull release signal at a double bottom where the watermark support was there we had additional strength from the bullish headwind in the daily chart there was heavy activity therefore as per the checklist the checklist is on our website under education menu as per the checklist on this day we had a box long trade setup so we would take the long on this day at market close put stop just below recent low because this is a reversal kind of trade box trade setup is a reversal trade setup clearly not in a uptrend so it's not a trend following trade setup our initial profit target would be as soon as risk resistance is covered which happened on friday when the declining yellow direction line was hit so we would book partial profit as the industry is strong fundamentally strong technically strong in this case we don't like to close full position we would prefer to hold partial position to let profit run on friday there was also a gap open gap up open day let me clear the chart first on friday we had a gap up open it had high activity at the end of the day when the gap up open happened we could start to look for a gap long trade setup using fine tune chart and i'm going to change to fine tune chart now i used hot keys the stock was already fundamentally strong technically strong and on friday it had a gap up open the blue pivot is higher than the green pivot green pivot is previous days high blue pivot is the opening price soon after that the early range high and low lines form gap trade setup says if the gap is significant if the stock is okay fundamentally technically and industry wise when it goes above early range high take a long trade put stop just below recent low and book profit at one of the pivot levels in this case the white pause level or when the risk distance was covered risk distance was already covered so we had two possible entry opportunities in netflix either one was on friday using the gap long trade setup or another one was several days ago at the very bottom 
when it gave us a false downside breakout and box long trade setup. That was the analysis on Netflix. Let's look at the futures at ES, the E mini SP 500. It broke out of the memory resistance on Friday. Today's candle so far is indecisive. Tried to go up, tried to go down. Now almost at the same price level as the opening price. Indecisive shape candle so far. The color is remaining bullish. That is expected because price is at near the same level as closing price of Friday. Let's look at NQ. Also, not, not any clear indication whether it will be a bullish move or bearish move today. Indecisive shape candle. YM, Dow Jones Industrial Average. Same indecisive. Usually the futures will be acting similar in the overnight session. The last one, Russell 2000. Same indecisive shape candle in the daily chart. We have no insight to gain from the overnight market right now in the futures. That is all we have time for today. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you again in the next Monday morning meetup. Have a great week and trade profitably.